Okay, now let's talk about the central visual system. So last time we talked about the eye, which is the main sensory organ for vision. And if you remember, the retina contains the cells that detect light, but also the retinal ganglion cells that send information to the brain. So the retinal ganglion cells, their axons come out from the retina at this spot right here. The uh, optic disc, also called the blind spot, because remember there are no photoreceptors there. And then their axons form the optic nerve. So this is the optic nerve is here. That's the, uh, that'd be the left optic nerve and this would be the right optic nerve. So you're looking at kind of the, the ventral surface of the brain. You're looking at the brain from underneath. And then where the optic nerves meet, they meet uh, at this structure called the optic chiasm. So this is the optic chiasm here. It's called the optic chiasm because it looks kind of like the Greek letter chi, which is a letter, it looks like a letter X. But then after you pass the optic chiasm, the axons are called the optic tract. So, optic tract is the part of the projection that connects from the optic chiasm to the brain, and the optic nerve is the pathway from the eye, or from the retina, to the optic chiasm. By the way, this whole thing is called the retinofugal projection. The word fugal just means away from, so it's just a projection away from the retina. So these axons come out of the retina uh, and hit the optic chiasm and then go into the brain. Some of the axons cross at the optic chiasm and some stay on the same side. And whether or not they do that depends on which side of the eye they came from. So if we look at the eyes, they, from above, they might look something like this. So here's uh, one eye. Here's the other. Uh, here's the lens of each eye. So you're basically looking at the left eye here and the right eye here. And in the middle, we have the nose. And then this line down the middle represents the, the, the line that divides the body and the left and right uh, halves. So that's the midline. And so we call this side of the uh, eye, of each eye, the nasal side because it's close to the nose. So that's the nasal side of the left eye. This is the nasal side of the right eye. And the other side we call the temporal side. So this would be the temporal side of the right eye, and this would be the temporal side of the left eye. So the light that comes in to each eye will hit the opposite side of where it came from because remember that's uh, due to the way that light uh, flips when it comes through the lens. So light from the left visual field will hit the right side of the left eye and it will hit the right side of the right eye. And light from the other side, from the right side, will hit this side, the left side, or the nasal side of the right eye, and the left or uh, temporal side of the left eye. So uh, again, that's simply due to the way in which the, uh, the geometry of the lens and the cornea work. So the axons that come out of the uh, the eye, start from those retinal ganglion cells. So let's say these are the retinal ganglion cells on the left, uh, on the nasal side of the left eye, and these are the retinal ganglion cells on the temporal side of the right eye. And then these would be the retinal ganglion cells on the these would be the retinal ganglion cells on the nasal side of the right eye, and these are the retinal ganglion cells on the temporal side of the left eye. And those, ax, those retinal ganglion cells have axons that come out and 
form the optic nerve. So the left optic nerve consists of temporal axons from the left eye, and the right optic nerve consists of nasal axons from the right eye, and then the temporal axons also come out from the right eye and form part of the right optic nerve. Oops, that's not right. And then they also come out from the nasal side of the left eye to form the other part of that optic nerve. So this, these are the two optic nerves here. But when they get to the optic chiasm, the axons from the temporal side of each eye uh, actually turn and stay on the same side, whereas the axons from the nasal side of each eye cross to the opposite side. And that's true for both eyes. So these are the nasal axons from the left eye. These are the temporal axons from the right eye. So they both come in, uh, forming the optic, optic tract, and they make their way to the brain. So this would be the left side of the brain. And the right side of the brain. And again, that, that cross happens at the optic chiasm. So after we pass the optic chiasm, we call this the optic tract. Oops. Optic tract. Now the reason that this, uh, these axons are uh, organized this way is because of the fact that uh, images from each side of the visual field hit the opposite side of the eye. So again, let's say there is a, an image over here in the left side of your visual field, this little happy face. That's going to hit the right side or the nasal side of the left eye. So there's the image. It's upside down and it would hit the right side of the right eye, also upside down. And then that the information uh, that the retina processes and sends to the brain then will end up on the right side of the brain. So the right side of the brain would see the image from the left visual field. Meanwhile, uh, a image from the right visual field, let's say that's a tree, will hit the opposite side of each eye, so it'll hit the left side of the left eye and the left side of the right eye. And so the image will end up in the left side of the brain because of the way those axons are connected. So that's why the axons do that. So you can see here uh, the same idea. This is pink, this pink area represents the left visual hemifield. This blue area represents the right visual hemifield. And that that fixation point uh, is the center of the visual field. So anything to the left uh, is on the left side. Anything to the right is on the right side. And you can see these lines represent what is seen by each eye. So this area here represents what the left eye can see, oops, sorry, this is this represents what the left eye can see and then this represents what the right eye can see. And the idea being that there's a, uh, an area in the middle called the binocular visual field which both eyes can see. So everything in here is the binocular visual field. And then everything outside of that area is what's visible to just one eye. Um, 
but whatever's on the left visual field uh, ends up in the left side of the brain. Whatever's in the, um, I'm sorry, whatever's in the left visual field ends up in the right side of the brain. Whatever's in the right visual field ends up in the left side of the brain. So each eye can see both sides. So your left eye can see part of your left visual field and part of your right visual field. Same thing for the right eye. But the visual field gets split into two and gets processed separately by the two sides of the brain. Um, so, for example, if you had an injury to some part of this projection, let's say you had an injury to the left optic nerve, that would sever all the axons coming from the left eye. So you would no longer be able to see anything in this part of the left visual field, uh, which is the monocular part of the visual field. Um, whereas the right visual field would be still visible to the right eye and the left side of that monocular visual field would also be visible because the right eye could still see it. But there would be no binocular vision anymore because this whole area in the middle um, that was binocular now is only being seen by one eye. Uh, this is a pretty easy injury to simulate. All you have to do is close one eye and you can tell which part of your visual field you can see with your uh, with just one eye and which parts you can see with both eyes. Uh, meanwhile, if you somehow had an injury to just one of the optic tracts, in this case it's the left optic tract, you'd be cutting axons from the left temporal retina and the right nasal retina. And those are the axons that see the right side of your visual field. So you would effectively be completely blind in this entire right hand side of your visual field. You could still see everything on the left side and you would even still have the ability to have binocular vision in the center part of the left visual field, um, but you would see nothing on the right side. So it would be almost as if there was a uh, piece of cardboard lined up with your nose blocking the entire right half of what you could see. Also it's worth pointing out this center binocular area is uh, important for depth perception. That's the entire reason we have two eyes in fact, so that we can see things from two slightly different angles and your brain sort of produces the illusion of depth from that. Um, and so someone with this kind of injury uh, who couldn't only see with one eye would have very poor depth perception, um, whereas this person would still have some depth perception but only on the left side. And of course, this uh, very rare uh, type of injury in which just the optic chiasm was cut would cause what's called tunnel vision because you would lose the, the nasal axons from both, eye, both eyes, which means that those peripheral monocular visual fields would be gone. All you'd be left with is that central visual field. So you'd still have depth perception, uh, but you would only be able to see in the center part of your visual field the, the peripheral areas would be blind to. So the axons that come out of the retina go mainly to three places. Most of the projections that we're going to be concerning ourselves with later are going to go to the thalamus. Um, the thalamus, uh, we've already talked about a little bit, it's, a, it's an important kind of relay structure for all the sensory systems. So uh, most sensory information has to be processed by the thalamus before it goes to the cerebral cortex, uh, and that's true for vision too. So most of what conscious visual perception passes through the thalamus on the way to the cerebral cortex. There's also a projection to the midbrain, specifically the superior colliculus. That's the, the those little bumps on the top of the midbrain. Um, and these are important for a lot of visual reflexes, including the pupillary reflex. So that's the reflex in which your pupil grows or shrinks depending on the light level. And there's also a projection from the retina to the hypothalamus. Um, and we're not going to talk about this much, but the, the hypothalamus, we will talk about the hypothalamus later. Um, but one of the things the hypothalamus controls is your sleep-wake cycle, also called your circadian rhythm. And so this projection from the retina to the hypothalamus is essentially your brain's way of knowing what time of day it is. Because if, if it's daytime, the sun's up, the uh, retina should be uh, exposed to light, and that's the... Uh, this hypothalamus detects that and controls the various uh, brain and hormonal cycles that are associated with your, your sleep-wake cycle. But like I said, we're going to mostly talk about the projection uh, through the thalamus. So there's a projection straight from the retina to the thalamus, to both sides of the thalamus, specifically to this little structure called the lateral geniculate nucleus, and then the axons that come out of the lateral geniculate nucleus project up to the visual cortex. So next time we will talk about the lateral geniculate nucleus in more detail.